Hi there, Alex here at MixingLessons.com. In this video, I'm going to give you a run through of how to edit in Luna. So we'll look at things like adding fades, nudging tracks, duplicating tracks, separating tracks, and we'll look at a lot of the different keyboard shortcuts and ways of streamlining your editing process within Luna. Okay, so the first thing that we'll do is we will go into the editing workflow. So if you look at this box up here where it says workflow, there's different workflows for different tasks. So if you click on this one, this is the editing workflow. To begin with, let's have a look at some of the basic things that we might like to do with our audio. So let's say you want to cut some of the audio. So you could cut an entire clip. So you could select the clip and then simply click cut, or you could select a portion of the clip to cut. So you could click and drag a portion and click cut. Now you can click cut there, or you can simply click X on your keyboard. Uh, you could also use Command and X, but it's not necessary to click Command. You can just click X and that will cut that part of the audio. Now, something to be aware of is that where you place your cursor on your clip will alter what you can do. So if you want to select the clip, you need to be either at the top or in the lower part of the clip. If you come into the center, then you will get this icon, which will allow you to drag and select a portion of that clip rather than selecting the whole clip. So the behavior of your cursor changes slightly depending on where you place it on the clip. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we progress through the video because there's some other things that you can do depending on where you place your cursor. So let's undo that. Uh, let's go over a couple more of the, uh, the very basics. So you could copy and then you can place your playhead, this long, vertical line here is what we would call the playhead. You can click paste and that will paste that at the point of the playhead. And of course you can use uh, keyboard commands as well. So you would use C to copy and let's delete that. And you can use V to paste. Or of course you could use the options up here to copy and paste. Next, let's have a look at how to duplicate a track. So we'll just delete that one. So if you select a track and click duplicate, it will copy and paste that track directly after the current selection that you've made. So if you select this track and click duplicate, it will duplicate that track directly afterwards. You could also do that by clicking Command and D. You do have to click Command for that one. And then finally we have separate. And so this will separate a clip wherever you place the playhead. And so you can either click separate, and then as you can see there, we have two separate clips, or if we undo that, you could simply click Command and E, and that would do the same thing. And again, you do have to click Command for that to work. Now, let's say that we want to separate all of the tracks, not just one of them. What you can do is you can place the playhead anywhere on this All Tracks ruler. So this line up here, if you click this anywhere, what will happen is the change that we make will happen to all of the tracks. So you could place that in the All Tracks ruler, and again, Command and E, and as you can see, that separated all of the tracks and not just one, like it did the first time. So let's undo some of this. Let's delete those extra tracks. Now it's worth knowing that even though that we're in the edit workflow, all of those keyboard shortcuts will work even if you're not in the edit workflow. And if we just make this a bit smaller, one more quick tip that I can give you is that if you hold down Option and you click and drag a clip, to a new location, then that will copy and paste that clip. Okay, so that covers a few of the really basic things that we might like to do. Another thing that we might like to do is nudge clips around so we can move them around in the session. So if we look here next to nudge, this lets us control the units that we nudge things around by. So with the grid, you can nudge things around, you can move things left and right based on the grid settings, or you can use beats, you could use time so you could change in milliseconds or samples and ticks and things like that. We'll keep it on grid for now. And then this displays the amount that things will be nudged by. So if we select a track, then we can nudge the track by this value. And we can nudge it forwards, backwards, or we can go in bigger increments as well. And so the keyboard shortcuts for this are if you want to nudge things further along in the track so to the right then you can use the the full stop or the period to move the track earlier back you use the comma to go forwards in the track by bigger increments we use the slash on the keyboard 
and to go backwards in bigger increments you use the letter m and you could change the value that these are moving by by simply typing in a number so we could change this to 16 and then this would move forward or backwards in finer increments now if you don't have a track selected let's say we just place the playhead here then those same controls will allow you to move the playhead around so you can go forwards and backwards and exactly the same we could move to a different increment and move around that way let's say you have two clips on the same track so let's again hold down option and copy this track let's say we want to move this clip up to the boundary of this one we would simply select that we would hold down control and option and then the full stop and that will nudge that up to the boundary of the next track or vice versa if we undo that and we want to move this track back to the boundary of this one option and control and we would press the comma and so that's another useful way of moving your clips around in your session okay now sometimes you might want to move the clips around without using the nudge function you might just want to click and drag so let's just delete this and something that's worth knowing is that when we click on this track to drag it around as i say you have to be at the top or the lower part of the clip for this to work when you drag this back and forward if you look here what it's doing is it's snapping to the grid so it moves along to the next part of the grid if you don't want this to happen you simply go up here and click on snap and turn that off and that will let you move freely and it won't snap so you'll be able to place your tracks anywhere but if say this song has been recorded to a click track and you want to keep everything locked to the grid then you would keep snap turned on and you can change your grid here so you can again move in finer increments if you wanted to so we've changed that to 16th notes and then it snaps in smaller increments so we'll put that back to four we'll leave snap turned on so it continues to snap to the grid but something worth knowing is that if you hold down command again you'll be able to move without it snapping to the grid so if you don't want to turn the grid off permanently but you do want to be able to move something a little bit more freely then you can hold down command and you'll be able to do that we'll put that back in place something else worth knowing is that it will depend on the track height as to where you need to be on the track for what you click on so if you click if we go onto a small track here you have to be in the lower part of the clip to be able to move it around so as you get higher it turns into this selection tool whereas if you go into the default you can be at the lower part of the track or at the top to move it around also when we're making a selection like this you'll see once again that it snaps to the grid so again if you were to turn that off you can move that without it conforming to the grid or again with snap turned on if you hold down command you can again make your selection quite freely without it snapping to the grid as soon as you let go it will once again snap to the grid something also worth knowing is that if you have made that selection and you want to extend it then you would simply hold down shift and then you can click there and it will extend it to the point that your cursor is at okay now let's say that you wanted to move this clip onto a different track but you wanted to make sure that it retained the same start point let's say that this clip started here in the session and you want to move it down to this track but you want to make sure that the start point remains exactly the same what you would do is you would hold down control and then as you drag it down even if you move left and right here it retains the same start point whereas if you had it on that track and you dragged it down there is a chance that you could place that track at a slightly different start point and then things might be out of time so that's another thing worth knowing right let's undo that okay now let's have a look at cutting and pasting parts of the clip but doing so in a way where all of the other clips move to accommodate the changes that we make so let's say that we want to cut this portion of the clip if we go up here to this section the shift section if we click cut it will remove this portion and it will move this clip up to here so that there isn't a gap so we can do that and as you can see that clip then moves to earlier in the session so that there isn't a gap in our audio and you can do that by clicking here or you can click shift and x to do the same thing so let's undo that okay now let's say that we copy this part of the clip so we'll copy that to the clipboard and then we click here and so we want to paste this audio at the playhead 
if we use the shift paste option that will paste that in there and it will move this clip up to accommodate what we have inserted in so we'll click paste as you can see it then puts in the clip or the part of the clip that we had copied to the clipboard it inserts that there and it moves this clip up to accommodate and once again there's a keyboard shortcut for that you would click shift and v to do that let's undo that okay duplicate means that we can select a portion of the audio and it will copy and paste this and it will insert it at the end of the portion that we have selected so it will insert it here and it will move this clip up to accommodate the new section that we're adding so we click duplicate it took what we had selected and it's placed it after the point that we had selected up to and then it's moved this along to accommodate and the keyboard shortcut for that would be shift and d let's undo that and of course it's worth mentioning that you don't just have to select parts of a clip for this to work so let's create some separation in this track we'll move along using the shortcuts and so if you wanted to cut this section of the clip you would click cut and it moves everything earlier on to accommodate let's undo that you could copy a portion of the clip and insert it at the playhead so we would place the playhead there and shift paste and again it will paste it in there and you could duplicate as well so you could select this section and press command and d and it will duplicate it and place it at the end of the current section so you can select entire clips and use these functions you don't just have to select part of the clip okay let's undo some of that okay and then insert allows you to insert a gap so you would select the length for the gap and it's going to insert it at the playhead and it will move everything else along to accommodate so insert it places the gap to the selected period of time that we wanted it to and then it moves everything else along to accommodate that gap now if you wanted to do that on all of your tracks then what you would do is you would select the period of time on the all tracks ruler at the top and then you could either click insert there or you could click shift and i and it will insert that gap into all of the tracks okay now let's have a look at doing some fade ins and fade outs and some cross fades on your clips so the fade in option means that wherever you pay, place the playhead it will fade in from the beginning of the track up to the playhead so if we had a fade in there as you can see we get this fade in up to the playhead if you wanted to do this on multiple tracks you could select multiple tracks at once by holding down shift and clicking on your different tracks and then here the playhead is still in place and so we click fade in it creates a fade in across multiple tracks up to the playhead fade out would work the same way but it would create a fade out from the point that you put the playhead to the end of the clip and if you wanted to do this on all of the tracks you could select the point for your playhead in the all tracks ruler click fade out and it will create a fade out on all of your tracks now if we just undo those something worth noting is that there's another way to do this so as i mentioned before the operation of the cursor will change depending on where you place it in the clip if you look here if you come to the end of a clip at the top of this clip here but beneath the point where you can move the, tr the clip around so here this turns into a tool where you can drag the fade out into the clip and you can also fade in at the beginning of the clip as well and then once you have these fade ins and fade outs in place you can click here to alter the length of the fade out or fade in and here you can actually alter the slope of the fade in or the fade out we can also create a cross fade between two clips so if we split this clip here you could either select how long you want the cross fade to last with the boundary of the two clips within the selection that you make and click cross fade and it will create a cross fade across those two clips or alternatively if we undo that you can see here once again the behavior of the cursor has changed now and so when we place the cursor at the boundary of two clips we have this crossfade option and you simply click and drag and it will create a crossfade for you once again we can change the duration of the crossfade we can move the entire crossfade and we can control the slope of the crossfade as well
Now to create a fade in, you can use the keyboard shortcut D. For a fade out, it is G. And for a crossfade, it is F. Now you may have noticed when creating these fades that if we drag in, once again, this is snapping to the grid. So we could either turn that off there and then we can create our fade without it snapping to the grid. Or once again, if we keep snap turned on and we don't want to snap to the grid, we would just hold down command and then we can move the fade more freely. Okay, now another thing to be aware of is that when we hover over a clip, if you come down to the bottom corner, you can then trim the clip so you can shorten the length. And again, hold down command if you don't want it to snap to the grid. And something else that you can do in terms of trimming the tracks, so shortening the length of the tracks, is if you place the playhead and click A, it will trim from the beginning of the clip to the playhead. If you place the playhead and click S, then it will trim from the end of the clip to the playhead. So again, those are a few other ways of trimming the length of your tracks. Now, something else that you can do, which can be useful when you're navigating your way through your different tracks, is you can navigate to the next transient on a track or within a clip. So the transient is the sound at the beginning of a waveform. It's that initial impact. So it might be the pluck of a guitar string, for example. And so that's very useful for finding your way to the beginning point of some audio. So if you select a clip, then you can use the tab button to tab through each transient. You could also select multiple tracks at once and tab your way through. You can use option and tab to move backwards. And then if you want to select portions of the clip based on the transients, then you would hold down shift and press tab to make a selection up to the next transient. Or you could also go the other way. You could use shift and option and then click tab to make a selection which goes to the previous transient. Okay, now if you wanted to mute a clip, you could select the clip and then click mute. That will mute that clip. If you have a track where you have multiple different clips on that track, because maybe you have cut different parts out of the clip, or maybe it's just made up of different clips to begin with, then you can use the consolidate button to create one clip out of that. So let's quickly do that. I'm just cutting some sections out here and I'm using X on the keyboard to cut them. So let's say we want to consolidate this, we would select it holding down shift and then you can click consolidate and it creates one clip. And to do that, you could also click option shift and the number three. And then if you wanted to, you could click the export clip button and this will allow you to export any of the clips from within your session. Now, if you're somebody who records or mixes music in a home studio and you want to get a bit of a head start with things like how to EQ acoustic guitar or electric guitar, bass guitar, drums, vocals, or you want to know how to get different results out of a compressor, whether it be to create level balance or to make tracks more punchy or to make tracks sound more fat, then I've got two free guides that I think you'll find really, really useful. I've got an EQ cheat sheet and a compression cheat sheet. And you can get both of those completely free when you go over to mixinglessons.com slash free dash downloads. I'm going to leave a link on screen to a playlist of videos that I've made about Luna, which will teach you how to do lots of different things in Luna. So if you're just starting out with Luna, or if you want to learn how to use some of Luna's different features to get the best out of the DAW, then I would highly recommend you to check that out. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you again next time.